Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce. So glad to be with you, and I'm so glad to be with my great and wonderful friend, Bill Bauer. Loving these programs, Bill. Mm. They're yeah. really, really great. I hope you've tuned. Please get on my website, and you'll see the whole series that we've done, because we've done quite a few programs on this, and this is all important. This is the key to how to live the Christian life, so you better get these programs. But I still say, and I'm going to say it again, we don't advocate a how-to. It's not a how-to. It's a how-who. And that who is not you. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. We love yeah, that. Yeah, we bit. love that one. I think we're going to name our series that. Series that. Yeah. Cool. We'll probably make a t-shirt. <clears throat> yeah. That. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Make a t-shirt. Awesome. So we've been going through um, a chart presentation that I often do on TV. So wonderful to do with two people. And so you can get two different perspectives of the same thing. But it's actually the, I like to call it the evolution, the mm. working out, really, of how I move from a lost self to come into Christ and have my sins forgiven, but still I'm deceived into thinking I can live my own life, and I have my own life to live, and it's Christ mm. plus a great big me. So I call that a trying or deluded self, and I move from that to a resting self. You know, Hebrews 4 says, don't, for, don't, don't miss this. Enter into his rest. And there's a rest mm. provided for the people of God. And that's just we're simply in... The, the cup is just simply being a cup and it's just hanging out. And the content is filling us up with himself. Right. So in that sense, it's like we almost lose ourselves. Well, I really wanted to, though, because I didn't like myself too much. But the truth is there never was anything wrong with my little I, the little human self. I'm created in God's image, spirit, soul, and body. So the human spirit was regenerated in Christ. It was dead in trespasses and sins. And now regenerated in Christ, that's what regeneration is. You see, regened really is what I like to say. And because the Holy Spirit overcomes the little spirit, and he joins himself. And actually, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So the two, it's a marriage. The two become one. So then I have to learn how to operate from that new identity. Right. And so um, as I learn to operate, I might stumble a little bit along the way. And then I'll remember, oh, that's not who I am. Oh, Christ is in me because I'm putting my whole faith in the walk of Christ in me, walking out, causing me to be the righteous person. Really, actually, I'm only righteous because I'm deriving my righteousness from Him. So, but the final stage is being. Now, when I first, when we first started, we talked about a lost person. They're just being themselves. They're just spontaneously being lost. Yes. They're not trying to be saved. They're not trying to be lost. They're not trying to do anything. They're just being. And it's because uh, Satan is operating us, actually, and, uh, and it makes us think it's just us. Well, in a sense, when we really come all the way home, and we're going to go over the great identity verse in the Bible, which is Galatians 2.20. Most of the time, I will bring that up and ask the, the audience, where's the great identity verse? Most people don't know. Well, you really should know this. You should... I'm not going to put a should like a law on you, but it would be helpful and wise for you to memorize this scripture because this is who you really are. Okay, so when we really go all the way through and we know who we are, then we come back to being again. I'm just being. And, and, and I've moved away from doing, 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 to just being. So there's a rest there. And I'm not trying to be righteous. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just being, you see. 
So, uh, because I know that I'm really dead and Christ is alive here. Because uh, I died with him, but he raised me up. And how did he raise me up? I died with him at Calvary. That dead spirit went to, down to the grave. And what really happened is death is really separation. So that spirit that operated me was severed at Calvary in his death. And now in his resurrection, I'm re regenerated, joined to his spirit and raised from the dead. Mm. And that's who I really am. So that little spirit was never the problem. You see, we've always blamed ourselves for everything. And also, Satan wants to blame, uh, well, he wants to condemn, that's how he condemns us, actually, mm -hmm. is blaming. And so we go back to that little self, oh, gosh, I am so bad, I am so this, I am so that. No, you're joined to Christ. Now, he is your life. And so we put our faith in that, and the Holy Spirit walks this out. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, yeah, that Galatians 2.20 is such a pivotal, such an important verse. You know, I am crucified, you know, and I, I thought, well, what, what is this I, you know, this inflated I? And when I found out, it was really the, the little spirit uh, joined to the spirit of air. And at the cross, uh, when Jesus died, his body represented our bodies. He died as us. Well... When he died, we died. And what died? That spirit of error, that inflated eye, which was really Satan, went out of us, you know. And that was a, uh, an important thing to really get, you know. And so, you know, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. I kind of see that as, nevertheless I live. There's the human vessel, it's, it wasn't uh, annihilated or crucified. The unique expression, the unique vessel is there. It says, nevertheless I live, yet not I. And that's what I like to say is the no self stage uh, where you see, oh, you can't do it. You, you, you're just not going to even try anymore. You realize if it's up to you, that's it. And then you, you come to realize there's another life that lives. And this is the resurrection side of the cross when you realize, oh, he's my sufficiency. Whereas before I thought it was all about my self-sufficiency. Now it's his sufficiency because... He, it's his resurrection. He lives. He lives the life. And so all of a sudden, out of death comes life, because life comes out of death. And so you've got to have a good, strong sense in which, in what sense you've died before all of a sudden you find out in what sense you've lived. And so another life comes, you know, and then it goes, and the life I now live in the flesh. Now here, that's where you get yourself back. You know, you, there's nothing wrong with my flesh, and, and I'm just living in a union with him, spirit, soul, and body, and I'm just being. And of course, people always think, Sylvia, if, if you're just being, that's, that's going to be passive. And what they don't know is you're just resting, but now another life who's very active and very functional, uh, you become more, really more effective than ever, because now it's trusting in another, it's another life that's living and you're just hanging out as Sylvia said and yet you're doing things and of course what I did Sylvia I used to do 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 to be oh, and then yeah. I found you that's know right. the doing comes out of the being naturally right. you know so you you're you're at a rest you labored to enter into his rest so to speak and now another one is is, is the point well I, I've always loved to teach Galatians mm -hmm. anyway and I like to make the point, and then probably if you're a Christian, you've been, you know, been taught in your Christian circles about Galatians that Paul really came down on Peter, mm -hmm. and he was a great spirit man. He, I mean, yeah. he would walk by, and people would be healed and raised from the dead just by his shadow. He was a great spirit man, and our old mentor used to call him Mr. Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So he was pretty filled with the spirit, but yet. He didn't know his identity yet. So you can really know the Lord for a long time and not really know your identity. Well, what Paul checked him about is he was still worried about my reputation, you see. And, and so as the story goes, he was sitting with the Gentiles and eating. And, of course, the Jews in the Old Covenant, they weren't permitted to eat, you know, like pork. Well, maybe he was sitting there with the Gentiles 
And these were new Christians that Paul had won to Christ. And, and maybe Peter was sitting there eating pork chops. We don't know. So anyway, and, but to, because he knew that now that you're a Christian, you're free. You can do that if you want to. You can eat because he got that from the Lord, that everything was clean. Don't call unclean what God calls clean. Yeah. So you see then, but when, some, when the James, the, who was really the pastor in Jerusalem to the new Christian church, when he was coming with his men, then all of a sudden, Peter jumps up and he, he, he's worried about his reputation with, the, with his, actually he had come from Jerusalem because he also was in Jerusalem with, Peter, with uh, James. So they were still mixed, you see, with, well, oh gosh, I, if he sees me eating this, he's going to think that this is sin and then I have to go through this whole thing. And so he jumps up and the, and the early Christians are going, what happened? And he's he's throwing his meat down, you know, like oh this is this is all I can't eat this. Well, they're going. I thought it was okay. I don't get this. Yeah. You know, they were totally confused. <clears throat> Peter came down. Paul came down really hard on Peter, and that's what Galatians two twenty. That's the reason for Galatians two twenty is because Paul had to set him straight. It's always by grace. Now we're under a, the new covenant is a new covenant of grace. Mm. Not the old covenant of I can't eat this, I can't do this, I can't do that, you see. Or, or even the way we worship or the way we sacrifice. All those things now, now changed in the new, new covenant. And uh, actually Christ fulfilled all of those old ways of worship and of course the sacrifice. And even the way we eat. Wow, that's yeah, a big one. It is. Because Christ is, has come in us. So he had to tell Peter, he said, now, don't you know, Peter, and he's talking to us too. He's saying, we are crucified with Christ. We, you and I, or all of us, if you're in Christ, you're, you, you died with Christ. You died when Christ died. So you were put into Christ in his death, or you were put into Christ at Calvary. So I say Jesus wasn't a lonely Savior there. We were put into him. You know why? We need delivered. I need deliverance. I had the spirit of error in me. How to get that spirit out and get the Holy Spirit in? Took Jesus to Calvary. You know, it's only the cross that could replace that satanic spirit with the spirit of God. So you see, he went to Calvary and bore our sins, bore that spirit in his flesh representing me so it's you and I and all of Christianity really was in Christ and we were crucified so why because we needed to be delivered from that spirit of error the satanic spirit so in his death the spirit goes out of the body so he laid in the grave now three days later the Holy Spirit came in that same body and raised him from the dead now we're also there in that body so it took him three days and he laid there three days and he could not get himself up and your point while ago is well taken bill your point is so many people want to jump up and say okay i'm christ so whatever i do is christ and pretty you you know the holy spirit has to clear us up and let us be dead for at least three days at least at least you know i was dead for a long time knowing i'm dead i'm dead when you're dead, see, I always say, what is a dead person? What can a dead person do? A dead person can't maintain their righteousness. A dead person can't sin. A dead person can't be righteous. A, can't, a dead person can't do anything. A dead person can't re recommit himself. A dead person can't consecrate himself. A dead person can't even surrender. Go, Bill, go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that is so good. God doesn't want a rededicated self. He wants a dead self. Mm. Three days, Jesus himself could not get out of the grave. It says, the glory of the Father raised him from the dead. That's what Romans 6 wow. says. Wow. The glory of the Father will raise you too. And it has to be the work of the Holy Spirit to raise you to new life. And not you just pretending, okay, I'm just Christ, everything I do is Christ. Yeah. Can't be right. that. No. It's got to be the real thing. So God keeps us 
pressed down a long time, I think. And so finally, you know, as we just, you know, we, we, I had to stand on that a long time. And then finally, I said, well, you know, he's, he's been raised as me. So, okay, I, I, I'm a raised person. But he's not only the resurrected life in us. And by the way, eternal life is a person. It's he himself. Mm -hmm. We don't get eternal mm -hmm. life. He is eternal mm -hmm. life. And, uh, but you know what? Then I realized, oh my goodness. He's not just a raised person. He is an ascended person. Mm -hmm. And so I am ascended and I am seated. Now Ephesians tells us that. So you know what that means? I don't just have the crucified Christ in me. Mm -hmm. I don't just have the resurrected Christ in me. Right. I've got the glory, glorified Christ <clears throat> in me. And Romans 8 says that. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 says that. Now, Romans 8 also says that this flesh is not the resurrected, not the glorified Christ. So don't go around thinking yeah, it's the glory. Right. No, we're still living in fallen flesh. That's still, that's the last part of our redemption. But we've got the glorified one inside of us. Hmm. And here we're living like paupers. We're living like people that don't have that inheritance. You see, it's like, how do we live in the promised land? This is the promised land within hmm. When you start living and functioning as a spirit person, you won't be function. It won't be like outer. Everything's outer. I got to get this. I got to get that. Everything's outer. It will be the inner indwelling Christ within you living the life, and you're going to be satisfied, and you're not going to live a condemned life, and you're not going to be trying to get more from Jesus because you've already got it, or you've already got Him. So, but it took me a long time to realize I had not only the glorified Christ in me, I mean the resurrected Christ, but I've got the glorified Christ in me. Wow. I mean, and it just so encourages me. Just uh, We always get encouraged uh, sh sharing back and forth about this. It never gets old because he never gets old. And, uh, and just the whole idea that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He couldn't raise himself up by the glory of the Father. Uh, when we go through difficult times, <laughs> we can't get ourselves up. We can't raise ourselves up either, but it's great news. To, oh, I can trust in your life, you know. You're the one that does it. I mean, uh, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing, you know. And so uh, sometimes I, I kid Christians, I, I say, you know, I think you think you're better than Jesus. He said, apart from him, you can't do anything, um, you know. And so, and he could... He, and he couldn't do anything apart from the Father. So sometimes I, I kid some Christians thinking, I, I think you guys thinking you're thinking you're a little better than Jesus. But it was just a thrill to know that, you know, at a certain place in your life when you kind of know you're dead and you experience you're dead and you, you just can't do it anymore, there's one last hope, and that's Christ in you, the hope of glory, that he himself will rise up in you and you'll be raised of course, you already are raised up, but you're going to experience that in your life, that his resurrection power, you know, and life out of out of death. You know, it's a, it's right. a tremendous, thrilling, thrilling thing. It really is. You know, all the universe operates that way. Mm -hmm. Life out of death. One time, I had a brother. He was not a Christian, and um, and my father, our father, was in a nursing home. My brother went to see him, and uh, my daddy was a great spirit man, but but my brother was not saved yet. Mm. And so he went to see him, and he felt so bad look, seeing my father there. He was well taken care of, but he felt sorry for him, really. And he said, oh, he called me. He said, oh, Sylvia, what, how can I, what can I do for daddy? What can I do for our dad? And I said, Michael, there's only one thing that you can do for your daddy. I said, before I tell you, let me just say this to you. Um, do you, you've got a leather belt on leather shoes? Well, yeah, actually I do. You know, that animal gave its life for you to have those shoes mm -hmm. and that belt. I said, do you eat lunch? Uh, yeah, you know, that, that, those vegetables and fruit, I mean, that's just on a common level that, li that life comes out of somebody, something else's death. And, and then I said, you know, our dad is paying a price for you. And the greatest thing that you can do is surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he wants for you. Because 
from what he's going through right now, and we're, we're doing everything we can for him. It's not that he was really in a bad sh shape at all. However, he's actually paying a price, death, because the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians, death works in us, but life works in others. So you see, out of my father's death, you see, my brother, what else could he do? He surrendered his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and is now a Christian today simply because he understood that all that life comes out of death. So the whole universe operates that way. Everything moves from negative to positive. Everything operate, functions by opposites. Mm -hmm. Everything does. And so 2 Corinthians is a great ministry uh, uh, letter, really, that Paul's writing to the Corinthians because he's talking about how, how, how it works in us because he's talking about, you know, I might be perplexed, but yet I'm not in despair. So he himself felt perplexed and didn't understand and you know it says in 2nd Corinthians he was pressed out of measure and if we would read 2nd Corinthians 11 we would find out exactly what he went through I think it's good for you to do that you see so so he was pressed outwardly but yet he didn't live outwardly he didn't live oh poor me I can't believe this what's happening to me he was off the me that's mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. and he was on to who he was in Christ so he, but he go, but he tells those opposites in Second Corinthians. I often like to read that. This is Second Corinthians four, because he said, "I'm perplexed, but not in despair." You see, I feel confused, but I have the clarity of the spirit. So he's jumping from one opposite to the other. So the negative opposite will always bring out what God intends to bring out. You see, anything the devil attacks us with is really an opportunity to see what God's going to do with it all. Right. I never think, oh, well, that's the end result. The devil's done all this. We've just got to fight the devil. No, to me, it's always an opportunity to, for God to show off, mm -hmm. to s show us what he's going to bring out of it. So there it is. Out of Jesus' death comes life, and life more abundantly. And to learn how to function smoothly in that, we have to learn how the difference between soul and spirit. Maybe we'll talk mm -hmm. about that next time. I was thinking, Sylvia, too, and that's so good on her speaking about the negative life out of death. And so that's why, as we were sharing about Galatians 2.20, we have to have a good opposite, a good negative, and that would be uh, knowing that we've died and experiencing that we're dead apart from Jesus. We, we've got to have that clear in our lives, a, a really good solid, solid knowing that we're, we're dead in Him and how, how that works out before we find out how we're alive in Christ and with His resurrection life coming out of death. So that's that not I. You've got to have that's a good right. not I and see what that not I was, which was the deceptive spirit of error making you think you were an I alone right. with a life of your own. Well, but I love Galatians 2.20, mm -hmm. the last part of it, it says, this life, he lives this life in our flesh, mm -hmm. in flesh, but it's the life of the Son, it's the faith of the Son of God, it's the life of the Son of God mm -hmm. in our human container, in our human vessel, you right. see, and the, uh, I'm unique, I'm not like Bill, Bill's yeah. not like me, we're all meant to be different. Because the Holy Spirit takes a different expression in each one of us. God's not satisfied to just live in one person one way and look one way. Right. He brings our humanity alive. And so all the things I never thought I could do. I mean, you know, I'm actually, when I was growing up, I found out that I was dyslexic. Not severely, but a, quite a bit. A lot of, even today, I still get a few things backwards when I talk. <laughs> but any, anyway... Uh, so I never thought I could write. I never thought I could be on TV. I never thought I could teach, you see, because I was just looking at my vessel and, oh, poor, there's no way, you know, I'm so weak and there's no way. Well, the truth is I am weak vessel. But what I've discovered is that weakness is right because it makes me empty of myself. And then I can be filled with the life of Christ who brings my humanity alive. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I've written, how much have I written? A lot. Oh. 
And yes. by the way, <laughs> and I've just finished my new book called With Wings as Eagles. And Bill always says, oh, that's a bomb, but he always uh -huh. says that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bomb. <laughs> and then Treasures of Darkness, I've written that. And gosh, many, many, many little booklets. I never thought I could do any of these things, but the Spirit of God. And I don't even feel like when I read these booklets, I think, gosh, we did I write them. You see, because it's like automatic writing or something. It just pours out of me. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy isn't Spirit, it? Yeah. It's Christ being my life. And it's a thrill. It's a thrill. It's a thrilling adventure. And so even anything that comes that poses, that threatens me or Bill or our ministry or what we're doing or anything in my life that threatens us is only an opportunity to see a greater reality of what Jesus is going to do with it all. Wow. Right. wow. That That is fabulous. <laughs> well, wow, I see our time's over again. Now, let's say it again, Bill. Okay. Let's say it again. Let's, let's go, say it go again. for it, Sylvia. Okay, okay. great. Okay. okay. It's not uh, a how-to. How to. It's, it's a how-who. How who. And, and that, that who is not you. you. Bye. See you next time. The more I try, the more I fall. You've been watching Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters that make this program possible. If you've been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www. Dot the liberating secret dot org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here, Monday through Friday, at the same time, for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.